I'm going to show you how the drum editor works now. All I need is a track. I'll set the class to a drum track. Make sure the channel is 10 because the universal sound module acts like a standard general MIDI instrument. So the um, drum channel is usually 10. And um, I'll create a part. Double click on the part and there's the drum editor. Drum track, you've got all the different drum sounds here. And before I talk too much, I'll just play and record straight into the editor. As you can see, most of my notes are um, played in ahead of the beat, which is not a good thing, I suppose. So what I'd do in this case is before I quantize it, I'd select all the notes, I'd go for a snap value of something very, very long, let's say 128. I'll choose the notch tool, press control. Now I quantize the notes, and they're all in place for where, they, where they're supposed to be. Let's play them back. A tambourine, a crash cymbal, this is the bass drum roll, snare, 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 cowbell, I had a few open highs here. If I have a slap. The drum editor works in much the same way as the MIDI editor works, the key editor. Um, there are really only three differences. Instead of having a piano, um, piano line down here, you've got um, all the different notes with their respective drum names. That's like you've got a C down here, which is usually a bass drum. Um, the side stick is usually C sharp. This is a D, D sharp, and so on. Um, in order to hear the notes, you have to switch on the speaker symbol in the editor. Now you can hear them. You can use the arrow keys to go through the different parts. But now you you can um, select if, um, select the instruments that you want to go through. Now I'd be going through the different snare sounds, and now I'll go through the different hi-hat sounds. You've got the same controller window at the bottom, as in the MIDI editor. You can select velocity. Now we can see the velocities of the closed hi-hats that I've played. If I go for the snare, these are the velocity values of the snare drum, and if I click on bass drum, you can see the velocities of the bass drum which I've played. Another main difference is the your tools that you've got. All the tools are the same as in the MIDI editor, apart from the drumstick. And you use the drumstick to write in drum sounds and erase drum sounds as well. For example, I could add more snare drum, more hi-hat sounds, or if I wanted to, I could just click on one of those sounds, 
and drag across to delete some of them. Again, this feature might not be visible on your screens, but it is visible when you do it on your own. Another difference to the MIDI editor is the fact that you can see MIDI lengths here, or the lengths of the nodes. All nodes look identical. There are little Cubase symbols if you want to. But um, you can still see how long the nodes were played into the machine by looking at the info line here. This node is 2 16th notes long and 1200 ticks. This one is only 2048 ticks long. This one is 1 16th note long and 1248 ticks. This is really because whenever you hit a drum sound, it doesn't really matter how long you keep your stick on the drum kit if, if you so wish, because, because um, the sound or the length of the sound is then usually only um, determined by the actual sample length. So as soon as you hit, um, let's say, a bass drum, the bass drum goes boom. That's it. And if you hit a cymbal, depending on how long the sample is. Um, so it wouldn't matter whether you'd um, specify a long cymbal or a short cymbal. That's the same thing. The best way to work in a drum editor is to set up a little two bar loop, like a cycle, bar three, and, um, and just add nodes and take nodes away wherever you feel like you want to do that. If you don't want to hear the notes you're adding to the arrangement, you can switch off the speaker symbol here. See, now you can't hear these open hi hats, but as soon as the tune gets, gets around to them, you can hear them again. Obviously, what you do is entirely up to you, and, um, and the more different things you can come up with, um, the better, really. Now, let's open up this panel here. And, and enjoy the view. And we can see everything. These are the names of the different instruments. This is the channel, the MIDI channel, the nodes are being played on R2 or played on, and this is the output. These two settings here, channel and output, are only interesting if you haven't specified an output or a channel in the arrangement window. That means if you set any in the arrangement window, and no output, or something different, then whatever, is, um, whatever it says here becomes the valid output. Obviously you could have an output for each of those differently. You could send the um, snare out to to um, the LM7 and um, this one to the JX16 if you wanted to. Let's say you've got five or, well, I don't know, two to three different drum modules and you like the bass drum of one of them and you like the snare drum of another one, all you need to do is, is to specify that you're sending the um, bass drum sound to your drum machine number one, let's say you've got a cork drum machine and um, your snare sound goes out to a different drum machine and um, and, and that's that's how you do it then. But usually you don't don't need to play around with these settings and you can leave them wherever they are. As long as in the arrangement window you specify a channel and an output. <laughs> If you wanted to change the values of all of these outputs at the same time, I press Alt first, and that did the trick. So um, the way to do it is you 
press Alt first, select the output you want, let's say the Universal Sound Module, let go, and it changes it down to the Universal Sound Module for all of them, and then you, then you can let go of Alt as well.